What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, DC to Cool, back in for another video. Today's topic is One Piece. We're talking about One Piece, the Netflix version of One Piece, the live action Netflix One Piece. So, I've been watching One Piece here recently, actually, which is pretty crazy that this actually came out. Um, I'm 115 episodes in to the actual anime series, whatever the case may be. Um, I got smoke for y'all, uh, One Piece fans, another time. I got a One Piece review coming. Uh, for an anime, what I think about it so far. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get into this live action adaptation. So let's start with some pros. Um, the actual image, the actual look of the show, uh, big, big W. Um, you know, they actually, whoever put this show together as far as visually, did an amazing job. The characters are very accurate to their actual anime counterparts. You can tell this person actually cared about what they were doing and tried to make them look, truly bring the characters to life. And the costumes, you know, even, you know, the actor, you know, who plays Zoro, you know, not having his hair green, you know, the guy who played uh, Don Cree having his hair purple, like all of that. They could easily, there's some old Hollywood, oh, well, you know, have the character, I mean, they always do this kind of stuff in Hollywood where the character can't even be bothered to change their hair color to the actual representation of you know, what the character looks like. You remember, like, I shouldn't bring this up, but Dragon Ball Evolution, the, the girl playing Boma, she had, like, two or three blue highlights in her hair. She, she couldn't be bothered to dye her hair blue or put a wig on or something. It was ridiculous. That's normally how they do. So they actually did put a lot of effort into the costumes um, in this show. I got to give them credit on that. Everybody looks pretty much spot on. Um, you know, so I got to give them credit on that one. Um, you know, with that being said, we also the cinematography, the actual fight cinematography, like the chore the choreography, um, or uh, it, you know, especially with Zoro, was actually pretty good. Like it's pretty good. The fight layout, the f where the fights went, actually pretty good, pretty accurate to the anime. It looks pretty good. They did a really good job with the stunts and the choreography and things of that nature. I thought it was pretty sweet. Um, so I enjoyed that. Um, the actor and the acting himself. Solid, it was okay. Mostly pretty much believable for the most part. Um, you know, nothing award winning, nothing Oscar worthy, but for the most part pretty much uh, okay. Now I'm going to get to some cons here. Um, and I am going to do light spoilers. I mean, again, I, if you watch it in the show, I would assume you've seen the anime or else I don't know why you're even watching it. If you are don't know anything about the anime at all and you don't want to know how the anime goes, now's the time to click off, but... We gotta get to spoilers. I gotta talk about the anime to the show, so it just makes sense. So, too much screen jumping, in my opinion. They jump screens too often in this show. Um, just a little too often with the screen jumping, in my opinion. Just nothing major. Just I think they just jump screens a little bit too much, in my personal opinion. That's nothing major though. Um, the actual changing the story. This is something that adaptations, even the better ones, are good at doing. The H Always want to change the story. Always want to add original stuff in that nobody asks for. With some, oh, we want to do something the fans can enjoy, but also give them something fresh. Nobody asks for anything fresh. Keep it one-to-one -one with the story. Nobody asks for that. For the most part, the story follows along what's going on, but they add this whole vice captain making a character nobody he didn't exist, and he's Luffy's grandfather and all of this nonsense, and they make, revolve the story, half of the story, or most of the story, you know, a mix of the story around Kobe, a character who's a minor character who meant nothing outside of, you know, the cup of coffee he was there in the original. It was absolutely stupid. It just wasn't necessary. You know, they made a character who really didn't matter or was very minute in the very early beginning and made him this big deal and involved their show around him. And it just was a, this whole extra plot point or they didn't need, it wasn't necessary. Then they changed the, the pacing. Like, first of all, they did Don Creek. Like, they did him so dirty. Dude was there a cup of coffee and they changed the story where Hawkeye, Mihawk, beats him. And it kills him easily. Like, that's not what happened. Don Creek had a great fight with Luffy. A really good fight and everything. One of the early fights I liked about One Piece or whatever. Don Creek was cool. You know what I'm saying? And you completely made him like a chump. Like, you did him completely dirty. You completely skipped over him. Like a non-factor. And I thought that was just trash. That was a, that was a big, uh, you know, strike. 
you know, you changed it were Buggy, you know, him, his first mate, and the second mate. The first mate and the second mate didn't even fight. The first mate got choked out like a punk. You know, and they didn't even have a fight. And his fight with Zoro in the anime was pretty cool, too. His fight, you know, with him on the tricycle walk and stuff. His fight with Zoro was interesting. I was, I was actually looking forward to seeing that play out in live action. And they didn't get, they didn't do anything. You know? And then Buggy, you know, his fight that he had or whatever. I mean, they fought him a little bit, but they didn't do, really do much. I mean, they completely messed up how his fight went, you know, and like that. And they made him an underling, a goon, for all long, changed that and everything. So they messed up the buggy fight, or didn't really add the pieces that should have been there. Uh, uh, you know, Chump changed Don Krieg, and then went to all long or whatever, which that fight was okay, um, but there should be more to it, you know. Overall, it was, it was solid. Um, and everything, you know, overall was fine, whatever case be. Arlong was cool. He, the actor who played him looked good, and he really played his role well. You gotta give him credit. Um, you know, and then the ending, which really should have been Arlong, leading into season two, was his grandfather, and he's super strong and has supernatural powers for some reason. It's never explained, or whatever, and he's beating up Luffy and all of this, and this whole time's a test, and you thought he was actually there to, you know, uh, I should try to arrest him or all. It was just, it was just this whole plot that did not need to be there. This was not asked for. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to put this 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 in here. I just don't understand. I you know I, I don't get it. You know, but what do I know? You know they did uh, include Usopp's backstory. They did include Sanji's backstory. All that was done pretty well. Uh, they didn't include Nami's backstory. That was done pretty well for the most part. Everything too, interesting choice. They chose a choose a black woman as her sister. When the original, she clearly was not black. She was uh, Japanese. Her name was Fujiko. Was pretty clearly a Japanese name. Worst case scenario, a white actress. You know, shout out to Eagles in the shell. Um, so interesting choice, strange choice. Not my complaint. She was a very attractive black woman, but I just thought it was an interesting choice. But you know this. But outside of that, everything else, pretty much everybody else is racially uh, on point. Uh, even the actor who plays Zoro is actually Japanese-American, which is pretty sweet. Um, so they did a really good job with this, for the most part. Um, I enjoyed it. I'll watch season two if it comes out, whatever. CGI, a lot of times, it was up and down. Sometimes it looked cool, sometimes it looked goofy. But I think it was overall one of the better adaptations. I would say, for me personally, it's a 7 out of 10. I would say overall it's a good adaptation. I watched all eight episodes. I was entertained for the most part. I would say if you're a One Piece fan or watching the show, whatever, definitely go ahead and give this one a look. 7 out of 10 for me. Overall, solid to good. Hopefully, we get a season 2. We keep it just to the story. No extra changes. That's it for me. Tell me what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe. To the next video. Peace out, y'all.